Mind if I join you? But after all we've been through? I don't even know your name. Why do you do it? I mean, I, I know why I did it. But you've obviously done this a lot. On the tenth floor, room with a balcony. Give me the card on the Joneses. Is this their car? I may be back, Clark. Pray I am not. Look, if this is inconvenient for you, I'll just... Uh, no, there. no, no, not at all. Why don't you come in? Have a cup of coffee. Maybe something a little stronger. Why don't we start with coffee first? So this truck swerves in front of me and I can barely... What? <laughs> I've been patient long enough. I don't want to know about your road trip anymore. I just want to know one thing. What's that? Why are you here? Oh, uh, I thought I said. No, no, I would have remembered that. Uh, well, um, Richard and I have separated <laughs> again. I left him. And um, I was just driving around, and I guess I ended up here. You know, we didn't spend a lot of time growing up together. Me in Texas, you in Florida. But I do know one thing about you. What's that? When you say mm and ah a lot, you're lying. Uh, I do not. It's, it's a, um, you know, a bad habit. Why don't you simply just tell me what's really going on and try and include how you uh, cut your elbow? Well, it's Richard. He left me. He left you? Three days ago. <sighs> it's 
Mom know? No, I... I thought I'd call her from here. No, why don't we hold off on that step a bit? Look, I know you and Mom don't really... No, this isn't about Mom. It's about you. All right, you brought her up. All right, all right. I'm sorry. Why did he leave you? He, uh... He said I was boring. And you know what? Maybe I am. I mean, I just... I get up, I straighten the house, I watch some soaps, and I wait for Richard to come home. Pretty racy life, huh? Hey, there's got to be something that you've done that's interesting. Mm. Well, I guess there is one thing. Tell me. I had an affair. I think it's time for something stronger. Mm. Yes, Alice. My name is Thomas Patrick Ryan. I was calling to find out why I haven't received my driver's license renewal. Ryan, R-Y-A-N. Why are you dragging? Claudia stopped by last night. She's spending a few days with me. Yes, I'm still here. That's impossible. How could I have 37 points on my driver's record? Well, accidents. I haven't had an accident in 12 years. What are they? Yes. Yeah, wait. Does she and Richard break up again? Mm-hmm. Is she okay? Not really. Mm-hmm. Five. No. No, no. No, no, those would be work-related accidents. No, I'm a cop. No, 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 no. See, those are accidents that I would have had while I was on duty. That is not my personal driving record. Sergeant. Look at, Alice, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a peace officer. Could you just cross-reference my personal driving record with my work driving record? You see, that'll clear everything up. We got a homicide. Um, I, I, I really got to go. I'll call you this afternoon. On a rooftop near the Palais Hotel downtown. And it looks like a mob hit. Twice in the back of the head. No ID on them, no witnesses. A couple of uniforms found them. Tell you what, I got a meeting. As soon as it's over, I'll meet you. Cass, could you rent a car for me? Why? Mercedes, Porsche, BMW, just anything. I'm afraid to ask. Please. Well, even if I rented it, you couldn't drive it. Only the renter can. Yeah. Rental agency doesn't have to know. Excuse me, I'm supposed to talk to the investigating officers? That's us. Uh, the officer downstairs asked me to hand this to you. Where did you get this? One of our parking valets found it in the lot. You know, near where the shots were fired yesterday. What room is this? That one. No, I'm probably going to regret asking you this, but why do you have to rent a car by tonight? I have a date. Oh, your car broken? No, I told her I had an expensive car. <laughs> Come on. Excuse me. Please tell me that you just started cleaning this room. I'm about half done. OK, uh, don't touch anything else around here. Have you done the balcony yet? I'm supposed to do that last. Did you work yesterday? Yes. Um, excuse me, I got something stuck in here. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Happen to see who was in here? I saw them come in. Could you give me a description? Uh, the guy wasn't that old, maybe 30, maybe 35. Dark haired, kind of handsome. Uh, she was in her 20s, about this tall, blonde, pretty. You know, she sort of looked like her. What? Nothing. What? Nothing. Oh, we think uh, a couple may have been in this room, witnessed the hit. She may have seen them. Well, it'd be nice if we knew who we were looking for. What happened here? You got religious all of a sudden? <sighs> One of them was wearing this. Oh, you got to be pretty devout to carry those around, right? I mean, it's not like me wearing a Star of David, is it? No, 
Do those look like initials to you, Harry? Just why don't you tell me? Looks like P.F. Well, there's a church right near here. St. Timothy's. You think, you think one of them was a parishioner? Well, both. It's worth you and Cassie checking it out. Harry, do you mind driving him home? Something I have to do. Well, what's wrong? Just something I have to do. Is that OK? Uh, okay. yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I guess so. How come every time she asks you for something, she gets it? It's not every time. All yeah, right. Let's go check the church. I'll check the rectory. Hi there, uh, Harry Lipschitz. I'm Jewish. Yeah, hi there, Harry Lipschitz. I'm Jewish. Hi there, Harry. Are you? I know who you are. What are you doing? Yeah, okay, I'm just a little uncomfortable. That's all. In here. Quit hocking me. Shh. Sit, sit down. Sit down. Sit down. It was right after President Kennedy was assassinated. I was home from college. Mom and Dad wanted us to pay respects to him. So they thought it would be a good idea if we all went to a Catholic church, him being Catholic and all. Beautiful sentiment. Yeah, I guess. Anyway, we all go in there, and we sit through the entire ceremony, right? And I look around, and I see this kid staring at me. And I notice that everybody is looking at us. Why are they staring? We were the only ones who weren't kneeling. The entire ceremony, 400 people are kneeling, and we're sitting there like royal schnooks. <laughs> May I help you, gentlemen? Hey, Cass, you off? No, I just thought I'd come home and have lunch with you. Mind? Are you kidding? Want a salad? Sure. So what'd you do today? Did you hear from Richard? Mm. No, he doesn't know I'm here. How's your elbow? Oh, it's getting better. How'd you say you cut it again? Oh, I, um, I fell. I told you, remember? I was thinking about Richard, and I wasn't looking where I was going. And I, uh, fell. That's right. Um, fell over a glass table. Room 1005, wasn't it? You want to talk about the affair yet? Look, I don't care, except... <laughs> Thanks, Harry. I'll bring her statement when I come in. She's just a little shook up. Ooh, fast. You okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks. You got any idea who did this? I don't, but I know who might. Claudia. Oh. Oh, well. Just a sec. Hello? Oh, hey, Alice. Thanks for getting back to me. Listen, any headway in that licensing thing? Computers are down, huh? Well, can't you do it manually or something? No, 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 no. I'm not trying to tell you how to do your job. Well, what about a, a temporary permit? Not with 37 points on my driving record, huh? Okay. Yeah, thanks. Bye. I am toast. Tom, can you get these uniforms out of here? Yeah. Claudia, you were always so strong. This would have never happened to you. <laughs> I've never been where you have. I don't know what I would have done. I need to know his name. I can't. Claudia, this isn't about judgment. If he's a witness, I need to talk to him. No. Cassie, I can't because I don't know his name. Well, the two of you did see the shooting. Did you recognize the picture of the shooter if you saw? Maybe. He looked up at us, at me. We weren't that close. His eyes. You could feel that chill. Cassie, I swear I never did anything like that before. I kept hearing Richard saying what a bore I was. I felt like this lost dog in the rain somewhere. I just needed to be with someone, Cassie. 
I need it to be not boring. That's all. To make the rain stop for a while. Hey. <laughs> oh, everybody's been in the rain. <laughs> what am I gonna do, Cassie? I'm gonna be all right. And the first thing I'm gonna do is get you out in here into a safe place. Where? Crystal! Hey, it's I'm Ryan. <laughs> How you doing? Great, oh me, you know, same old, same old. Yeah. Well, I spent a horrid day watching them tow the Mercedes into the, uh, into the uh, garage. Yeah. Thank God I still have the old Mustang. <laughs> Listen, I was thinking. Uh, could you hold a moment, please? Thank you. Cassie, this is amazing. I was just about to call you. Claudia was the woman in the room at the ballet. She saw the mob hit. Crystal, uh, this is my business manager on the phone. Can I call you back? Thanks. I can't believe it. She was in the room. Yeah. Oh, does Harry know? Uh-huh. Oh, we gotta sort this out, Cassie. This is very complicated. I know. But right now, we just need a place to sack out. Can we stay here? We? Well, whoever shot out my windows had to follow her to my place, and I thought we could stay here for a while. Of course you can stay here. I'd be happy to do this favor for you. Who knows? Someday you may be able to do a favor for me. Last time I heard that, it was from the lips of Don Corleone. But we need a place to couch, so thanks. Oh, no. I'll do the couching. You guys can stay in my bedroom. I don't recall you being this generous when we were married. So who was this guy? She didn't know him. You think she was protecting him? No. Huh. Anything from the church list? None of the parishioners' initials match the ones on the cross. Do you mind if I talk to her? Just go easy. She's been through a lot. I don't know about you, but I'm starving. You mind? Sure, are you in kitchens? <laughs> as clean as you go. So, Claudia, what can you tell me about this? This man that you were with, looks, mannerisms, anything? Mm, he was about your height. Black hair, dark eyes handsome in a mysterious sort of way. Mysterious? Yeah, there was something about him. Maybe it was the scar. He had this crescent-shaped scar under his eye. Which eye? The right one. I gotta make a phone call. You and I should go someplace. I did. Well, then what the hell is so important? You had to wait till we got here. You can't say hell in a church. Priests do. Funny you should mention them. Cassie, the man that Claudia was with. Was... The man that Claudia was with was a priest. What? That's why I waited until we got here to tell you you can't yell. See, you always yell when you get surprised and PO'd at the same time. Just tell me how you know he's the guy. The one she described could have been a thousand other men. Except for the scar. It's him. I know it's him. I saw him. He's here. We're here to talk to the parish pastor, Father Clennon, upstairs, after you. Not right, is it? Father Clannon. Ah, it's too throaty. I have to repair the read. Ah, Detective Ryan. Yeah. Oh, pleasure to meet you, <laughs> sir. <laughs> Sergeant St. John, Father. Pleasure. So, I understand you need some information concerning one of our priests. Father Flanagan, was it? We'd hope to see him. Is he here? Oh, he's out running errands. Is there a problem? We wanted to ask him a few questions. Well, there is a problem. There could be. How well do you know him? Well, Father Flanagan came down here about two, six weeks ago from Detroit. He raised money for needy children. 
was out of uniform one evening, walking back to the rectory, when he was jumped by some drug dealer who didn't like the father taking control of his boys. Nearly killed him. It was in his dossier when he came down here to recuperate. I suppose I know him well enough. Is there anything else you need to know about this man of God? Thanks. Barney, Tom Ryan. Listen, I need you to run a check in a Father Peter Flanagan. Start in Detroit. That's right, I said Father. Uh, don't ask. I need everything you can find ASAP. Thanks. Disappoint me, Dolan. Benny, I, I know how this looks. But... How it looks? Okay, okay. Uh, I needed the money to, to, to work a Ponzi scheme down here, so I borrowed the seventy thousand to get it started. This, this is my cover. Your cover? In that envelope? Well, this. Uh, I was starting another pyramid. There's more in the bank, over a hundred. You take this. I'll go get the rest. And uh, what do you say, Benny? Huh? More than double your money in what? Six weeks? You know what I think? I think you Ponzi bottom. You was gonna split and you was cashing out. No, Benny, you're wrong. I, I swear. <laughs> it's 90,000 there. That's uh, 20 more than I borrowed. 20? 20 don't even cover the big on the seven. Number one, you didn't borrow the money. You stole it from me. Benny, don't do this. It's how it is, dude. There are two ways I deal with people who take from me. You either get dead or hurt. That is like word of mouth. People only hear about it, maybe read about it in the papers. Hurt means every time someone looks at you, they're reminded you don't steal from Benny One Shoe. It's like a walking infomercial. I need a new infomercial, Doolin. No, wait, Benny. Uh, I got more money in the. <laughs> St. John, I got something. We ID'd the hit victim, Eddie Cantrell. The idiot who mugged Paul Kosakis' grandmother. The same. No, it all makes sense. The guy mugs the grandmother, the head of the Greek mafia, so Kosakis puts out a hit to make the point. And doing it in public makes a louder point. Right, I got it. Right, what's the soup? What you for coffee? Let's get some. Get Fell and help him up. Take it easy. Father Flanagan. Father Flanagan. Come on, these guys were trying to kill you. Just as Father Damien attracted the lepers, I seem to attract the misguided. Misguided? Being kicked in the face with a steel-toed shoe is misguided? Look, Father, does this have anything to do with your holy vows? He's not a priest. What are you talking about? Oh, you're Flanagan. Or whatever the hell your name is. Read that. He was with my sister in the hotel room, Harry. You lost your brain? This is a man of the cloth. Well, the only cloth he likes is bed sheets. Tell him, Flanagan. I can get Claudia here to identify you. Oh, by the way, that's her name. Is that what you want? I'll pray for your sister. But whatever her sins, they won't be erased by accusing me. <sighs> you piece of... Cassie! Father, f forgive her. I'm terribly sorry. Harry, just read that. Father Peter Flanagan, S.J., Doctorate in Theology, blah, 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 blah. Detroit Archdiocese, died, ja died January 1st, 1987. You can explain this? Did you check the curia? 
Peter Flanagan is not an unusual name for a priest. We sure did. There's 20 Peter Flanagans from coast to coast, and not one fits your description. Not one. Your serve. Peter Flanagan has not always been my name. Did not Saul become Paul? <laughs> well, then who were you? Who I was does not matter. Who I am now does. Yeah. Father Flanagan, uh, yesterday, a man named Eddie Cantrell was murdered near the Palais Hotel. I pray that whatever missteps Mr. Cantrell took on this earth will be forgiven in heaven. The only misstep that Eddie Cantrell made on this earth was that he mugged Paul Kousakis' grandmother. <clears throat> and if we're right, and Kousakis did make the hit, he's not going to let any witnesses live. My life has been devoted to helping others, but... I cannot help you. I'd like some confessional time with the father, Harry. Cassie, do me a favor. Take the mug book over to Claudia and see if she can ID anybody, all right? Come on, Harry. This guy's wearing a paper collar and you know it. Harry, I'll take the mug book over to Claudia. Let Cassie have a go at this guy. One hour and no slugging. One hour? All right, two. But that's it. God forgive me if I'm rousting a priest, please. Amen. Thanks, Francis. Claudia. I was just, I was just thinking. You mind if I uh, turn on a light? Listen, I, uh, I brought a mug book home for you to take a look through if you're up to it. Thanks, Tom. You're sweet. I'm really. Yeah. Mug shots, huh? One book? Every crime family has their own. Privileges of the rich and infamous. Just take your time with it. Can I get you something? You want a coffee or tea or anything? A coffee will do. Thanks. Your captain said this would only take a couple of hours. I've been here for two and a half already. May I go back to the parish now? Actually, what Harry said was I could spend a couple of hours with you, and I haven't even started the clock yet. So, where'd you get it? Boys Town? I'm not following you. The name Flanagan. Why did you use your real name, Mr. Doolin? Mr. Doolin? I, I don't know anybody by that name. Hmm. Well, Mr. Zimmer does. He seems to think it's you. Who's Mr. Zimmer? I think you know him better as Binny One Shoe. It appears that you have, and I quote here, chapped his butt. Now, unlike you, I don't think he's a very forgiving fellow. He's mistaken me for someone else. Well, who am I to question a priest? I tell you what, I'll make arrangements for you and him to be released together. And that way, the two of you can work out this little mistaken identity problem yourselves. Uh... So is this about you getting back at me for being with your sister? No. This is about solving a murder that you were a witness to. I didn't get a good look at the guy. I'm not a good witness. <laughs> so you do want me to release you with Benny and his friend Chucky the G? My, where do they get those colorful names? This, this one. You sure? I think so. Everything match? Hair? Height? <laughs> You're positive. Yeah. What kind of criminal is he? Uh, Nick Stavros worked for the Kusakis family about 30 years. He was their, uh, well, he protected their honor. So he's a lawyer? More like their enforcer. You mean a hitman? That's another handle you could put on it. Maybe I'm putting the wrong twist in this conversation. Cass, guess who Claudia identified the mugshot book? Nikki Stavros. Kasaka's oh, number one man. Well, I've got some interesting news for you. Father Peter Flanagan, his real name is Murky Doolin out of Detroit. I think he'll work with us. 
I got Harry to hold him on a PS writ, but we only got him for 48 hours. This is the man you were with at the Palais Hotel. He's a priest. I had an affair with a priest. He was pretending to be a priest. But you thought he was. It had my undivided attention for a moment. And you never told me. Well, what would have been the point? The point is, I had a right to know what is happening to my life. And would that make a difference? I think I'm entitled to the truth. And you've just been full of the truth, haven't you? This isn't working. I'm out of here. Claudia, I'm sorry. Look, it's, it's not a good idea, OK? You've got one of the most feared crime families in the state looking for you. You hit the streets, we can't protect you. So just stay here until we sort this out. OK. I'm going to pay Kusakis a visit, turn up the heat a little, see who breaks a sweat first. to stand. Thank you. This is my associate, Nick Stavros. So, how can I help you, officer? Sergeant Tom Ryan, I'm investigating the murder of Eddie Contrell. Perhaps you've heard of him. Yes. He had a misunderstanding with my grandmother. He's been forgiven. He's been found shot to death on a rooftop on the south side. You wouldn't happen to know anything about that, would you? If you're asking if I killed him, the answer is no. Well, maybe someone in your organization did, like the old man here. Ask him. Mr. Stavros, where were you two days ago between the hours of 2 p.m. and 6 p.m.? Malekos Billiards, 1010 Hill Street, shut pool all day. I've got two witnesses that say you weren't. Then why haven't you arrested him? Maybe I ought to. Mr. Stavros, you're on. Nick, did anyone see you shooting pool? I can give you seven names to corroborate. Write them down. You know, officer, my grandfather was a simple grocer who was always being harassed by the police. Now he turned the other cheek. I wonder if that's what I should do. Your grandfather was a thug who used people like Stavros here to beat merchants silly and take their businesses from them. All seven. Pick it up. I believe you wanted these names. We're not done yet. Anything? No. All seven alibis clear. Of course, they all happen to work for Kusakis. A cozy little workforce. Yeah. All seems pretty natural, considering they all share the same hobby of breaking legs. Sergeant Ryan. Crystal, hey. Thanks for calling. No, no, we're on. Yeah, I'll pick you up around 7.30. I'll be the devilishly handsome guy driving the Mustang mid convertible. OK, bye. Forget it. Do you remember when I said it was all right for you and Claudia to bunk up at my place and that someday you might be able to do me a favor? Well, the day has arrived. Hand over the keys, Cinderella. Under one condition. Tell me why you told her you owned a fancy car. You had to be there. I have a vivid imagination. Try me. OK, I was jogging in Douglas Park when this dazzling vision of perfection comes toward me. We chat. Still haven't heard the rich part. Well, I was standing beside this expensive car. That's why you wanted Cassie to rent you a snazzy car. So you can oppress her with your millions. Now, doesn't she know you're a cop? Well, that didn't come up at the time, but I plan to confess everything. After she fell irresistibly in love with you. 
Well, that's sort of a foregone conclusion to my charm with women, isn't it? <laughs> well, I bet she likes the modest side of you best. She'll figure you out. Not right away. Not right away. What? Now, you never met Stelbros, have you? No, we don't hang in the same circles. And what is the one truism of all St. John women? That we all look alike, so what? This would be perfect if we can get Doolin to go along with it. Oh, you want me to pretend to be Claudia? Well, you don't have to have an affair with Doolin. You just have to wear a wire to get Stavros to incriminate himself. Oh, come on, there's got to be a better solution. Well, I suppose we could put Claudia on the witness stand. Can't wait to hear my mother's reaction on me revealing Claudia's identity to the mob. Oh, all right. Well, who's going to talk to Doolin? I guess you won't be needing the Mustang. Uh, uh. So let's review here. You want me to blackmail a hitman? <laughs> I got a better idea. Why don't you shoot me now and get it over with? You know, you got a rap sheet as thick as a dictionary. Bunko would love to talk to you about your little Ponzi scheme. And not to mention the Archdiocese of Palm Beach in Detroit, who are on the edge of filing charges as we speak. Who left out Benny? And check you the G. Did I? Do you believe in redemption, Doolin? Yeah, but not as my final act on Earth. <sighs> All right, so you're saying what? We want you to put it on the line for us. We put it on the line for you. We lose your name, charges everything. You roll out of here like a brand new penny. Still asking a lot of me. You don't nail Stavros. I got nowhere to go. I thought you men of God prayed for your guidance and answers. So run this plenty years by me again. Yes. Stavros, this is Murky Doolin. I saw you on the rooftop two days ago. I was in the hotel. Yes, what do you want? $200,000. There were two of you. That was my girlfriend. Look, here's the deal. You meet her and you give her the money. Once she's got it and she comes back to me safe, our memories go blank. Where? The lobby of the Palais. You remember where that is? Four this afternoon. And if she doesn't come back safe, I go to the cops. How do I know this will be the end of it? Look, Mr. Stavros, I've got Benny Zimmer looking as shiny shoes on my face. I just need one score, and I never set foot in Florida again. But for then. <laughs> he took it. You call me when you get home. I will. Oh, here, you wanted this. Thanks. Look, I'm sorry about all this. Strangest way, I'm not. I caused all of this trouble, and you're not pissed? Hey, you didn't cause the murder. So you gonna go back to Richard? I don't know. I guess, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Still think you're boring, don't you? Cassie, I haven't changed. I'm looking at a woman who's had an affair, been racked by gunfire, on the run from the mob. Now, how boring is that? Not very. Can you imagine the look on Richard's face when he hears all of this? <laughs> well, maybe I should keep the affair part of it a secret. You keep it all a secret. People with secrets are never boring. I love you. Me too. <laughs> Here comes your partner. Hey. My name's Murky Doolin, and uh, sorry about all this. Claudia Barros. I'm not. Train leaves at 4.30. I'll take this the right way. Doolin, don't come back to Palm Beach. I hear that. So, I buy you a cup of coffee? Uh, that's what you said last time. <laughs> so this time I'll buy. 
So how'd you get that scar on your face anyway? Zip. You know, Harry, you really missed your calling. Thomas, might I remind you that I control your vacation days? I gotta tell you, this flak jacket is really, uh... Heads up, guys. We got something here. You stop with us? You got what my boyfriend asked for? It's a lot of money, but after all, we did see you kill someone, didn't we? Tom, he made it. He's got to be at the train find out how Stavros got a hand of us. Enough money can turn anybody, especially an underpaid civil servant. And speaking of money, keys to the Mustang. Fill it before you return it. I believe that this retires your debt. Ryan. Crystal. Hey, listen. I was thinking that we could, uh... Yeah? Yeah. No, of course. No, I understand. Yeah, thanks. Postponement. Cancellation. She confessed that she's a small town girl. Putting on airs. She decided to go back to Ohio and rediscover herself. <laughs> if you say one word, I'll be forced to shoot you. Tom, the only thing I was gonna say is I don't think you'll be needing these. Oh. 